Well, I'll, I'll get back on track now. I'll stop going off on a tangent so we can actually start our show now. Um, let's talk about the defensive line a little bit here, Ryan. Uh, we know uh, how questionable Arizona's defense is going to be this season. A ton of holes on that side of the ball. But um, I think that there might be a little bit of a bright spot on the defensive side here, and especially on that defensive line. Uh, they've got a lot of options that they could choose from. So give me your predictions here for this position group. Uh, who do you think will be the starters for the D-line come week one? Yeah, I mean, uh, they have some very talented veterans here. I'm looking at uh, a few guys, uh, senior J.B. Brown, Aaron Blackwell, transfer, Trevon Mason, um, and Regan Terrier, the, the main uh, group of guys that I think will take over this year. Um, I think the guy that really stood out to me early on in uh, team press conferences was Aaron Blackwell, just his work ethic and already his connection with, you know, the line coach, Stan Egan. Um, I I think he's due for a great season with the Wildcats. And I think there's a lot of upside here. I mean, the the defense, as we know, is going to struggle, but I think this D line could be a bright spot while the secondary could uh, show some, not so bright spots there. Yeah, I I don't think we know exactly, you know, what scheme they're going to be running. You know, we could see three defensive linemen. We could see four D linemen. Um, but for me, I think there are two locks at that position. And it, you mentioned them earlier, but it's Aaron Blackwell and Roy Lopez. I think those are the two dudes that everybody has been talking about in camp. I like the media availability. It's like we've been asking them all camp, you know, who are some guys that have stood out to you in camp, blah, blah, blah. And the two names that always keep – bringing brought up uh, among that defensive group is Aaron Blackwell and Roy Lopez. Like those are the two dudes. So like I, I, I see them being, you know, auto locks at the inside uh, defensive line positions. But besides those two guys, like I think the rest of the starting spots are kind of up for grabs. Like you mentioned it. And like, I definitely think that there are a ton of options for this team that they can choose from. Like, you know, I think Trayvon Mason is going to get a lot of playing time this year. Like you mentioned, um, you know, Keon bars, Miles Tapusoa, Mikey Irving, uh, Nahi Salonga. Like, there's a lot of, like, legit big body dudes that Arizona can line up in the trenches. Like, you know, like, big 300-pound guys. Like, this is not, like, a, a usual thing for Arizona to be talking about having, like, a bunch of, like, big guys that they can put on the line. But, like, you know, it was only just a few years ago Arizona was lining up a bunch of, you know, 250-pound guys at that D-line position. And, like, I was like getting secondhand embarrassment watching them just getting tossed around by the opposing 300 pound offensive linemen. But, but yeah, I think this is a pretty legit linebacker, or excuse me, a defensive line group. And I'm extremely optimistic about this position group. Uh, I think there's a lot of options here for sure. Yeah. And another guy that a lot of people have been raving about this um, the, uh, from the start of camp here is um, Regan Terry. A lot of people think this guy is, is, is going to be very good here at Arizona. And he's a young player, but just his size, he's 6'4", 285. He's gained a bunch of weight since coming lunch. To, Yeah, since coming into Tucson. And people think he can um, – he could do well here. I mean, we don't know how much playing time we'll get. Hopefully we'll get some. Another guy that I want to look at is J.B. Brown. He's a senior and – He's also he's also a big guy, 270 pounds almost, and I think um, as a veteran on this team, he's going to get a lot of playing time next to Aaron Blackwell and Roy Lopez. Well, that's the thing. Like like all of these defensive linemen are like so experienced. Like we might not even see Reagan Terry and some of the younger guys get time just because we know you know we don't think Arizona needs to play the younger guys. Like all of the guys are either grad transfers. Duco products or if they've been with the team for three plus years like we haven't really mentioned you know Greg and Terry at all but we might not even see him because we don't know if we're gonna need him on the defensive line because there's so many other options ahead of him like like honestly like shout out to Kevin Sumlin and his staff for coming in and just beefing up that position group like yeah. like we can't really give some someone credit for doing a whole lot here but like like he really has fixed that group and that d-line position like like that was the one thing that you know, Rich Rod kind of left this team like in a bad spot. Like I always liked Rich Rod. You know, I was a little upset when we when we fired him, but like 
I don't know, like the one thing, the one knock I had on him was just that he was just not a very good recruiter, like not a very balanced recruiter. Like he would focus on a lot of position groups and then just forget about the defensive line. Like, so like for, for Kevin Sumlin just to come in and, you know, fix that position group right away for, you know, not only, you know, bringing in guys that can help eventually, but bringing in guys that can help like right away, like, you know, finding these JUCO products, finding these transfers, these graduate transfers, like, I mean, that position group was just a mess when, when, uh, when Rich Rod left it. So for someone just to come in and fix that group, like, I, you know, you got to give him some credit for that. So shout out to him for that, honestly. Yeah. Like uh, adding those guys with Lopez and uh, Blackwell, the, those are two big guys and they're going to make a huge impact this season. I mean, it's a young, they, they do have some young players, but with this group, I don't think they're going to focus as much with the young guys. I think that's where in the with the defensive backs, the cornerbacks, the linebackers, I think that that's where they're going to focus. They're going to give some more playing time to the freshmen and sophomores. And hopefully this defensive line can bail out the rest of the defense. Like, I mean, like I've always thought that def- that the defensive line is just such an important piece of any defense. Like, you know, your defense is just gone to a next level when you have an elite def- uh, defensive line. Like, if you have guys that can plug up the run games, like, who cares how bad your linebackers are? Like, like they might not even need to get tackles because, you know, your big 300-pound dudes are blocking the, the A gaps and the B gaps. Like, and vice versa. Like, if you have – you can have the best linebackers in the world, but if your D-line sucks, like, you, you're just going to have that pulling guard or that extra running back just coming in and sealing off the linebacker. So, like, to have a good defensive line, I think, is actually – really good for Arizona because it can bail out these inexperienced linebackers and really help them out at that position. Cause you know, like if, if you're able to plug up the trenches, like, you know, who cares if your linebackers can't make a tackle because they won't need to make a tackle because they can't get past the defensive line. You know what I mean? So like, I really hope that this defensive line ends up, you know, being the strong suit for like, I think out of any of the position groups, if you want to have a strong, you know, position group, with a bunch of other mediocre position groups, I think the D line is the one you kind of start with and then you build around that. Because if you start going the other way, it's the same thing with the secondary. Like you, if you have good defensive backs, it doesn't matter if your D line can't get a sack and can't get to the quarterback. Cause you know, they've got 10 seconds to throw the ball. Like, of course somebody's going to get open. So like it starts with the defensive line. You need to have a good defensive line. And I think, you know, we, we can rag on this defense all we want, but if this defensive line actually shows up and does, what it could potentially do, then I, I I don't know. I think, you know, there could be a chance this defense, you know, isn't God awful and it's just awful because the defensive line uh, has really helped it out. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's something along with that, something that I think the D line needs to do a better job of and hopefully they will, is just simply getting to the quarterback. Like if you look at the stats last year, each guy maybe like com- they all combined for I think like like ten to ten about sacks something like that around there and yeah, it's just yeah. and it's just like that's not acceptable and like we talked about if you, if you're not, you're not putting pressure on the quarterback not getting to the quarterback in a timely manner then it's just gonna open up the field and that's where the blame goes and the cornerbacks and the um, back of the defense um, struggles. Yeah, I think part of that last year was the scheme. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, halfway – I don't know if we ever – I don't know if Arizona ended with the least amount of sacks, but, like, like halfway through the season, like, Arizona was literally, like, dead last in Power 5 sack numbers. Like, out of all the Power 5 teams, like, they had, like, the least amount of sacks. Like, it was such a problem last year. And I think part of it was the scheme. Like, there were a lot of, you know, three-man blitzes, which I absolutely hate. Like, I don't, there's no reason to be blitzing three guys on, you know, second and, and medium. Like, like, so I think part of that was the scheme, but a lot of it needs to, you need guys to step up. And I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about Jalen Harris coming back and going back to his natural position at outside linebacker rather than having to play end. Because last season, I think Arizona needed uh, him to play end. They didn't have a lot of options on the defensive line, but they really do now. So I'm really optimistic about this group. I think we, we, we will see a little bit of an increase in the pass rush, and hopefully we'll see a major increase in the run support as well. Yeah, as you just said real quick, I, I do believe that that linebacking core will be better this year and is a little underrated. 
Yeah, we'll uh, we'll move on now. 